First, something simple. A classic empire cookie filled with raspberry jam. So it starts with room temperature butter. I like to weigh my butter to measure it precisely. So I need five ounces in total. And the next ingredient is the icing sugar. The same measurement as the butter, half a cup plus two tablespoons. You always have to sift your icing sugar. Because it is so finely ground, there's always a few lumps trying to sneak through. And we want a smooth and tender dough. I'll mix it on low speed, combine the butter and icing sugar very well. Now, I'm not using whole eggs, but I'm just using egg yolks. This one is at room temperature. Now, the other egg I grabbed from the fridge because I actually want to use a hard-boiled yolk because it makes the dough easier to handle, but again, maintains that tenderness. I use a zester to finely grate it so that it gets smoothly incorporated into the dough. And the last thing to add right now, just half a teaspoon of vanilla. I'm not gonna get crazy with the flavors here because this is the basic sable dough recipe that we're gonna build other things from. So we've got the two types of yolks, the vanilla. Let that mix. Now it's time to add cake and pastry flour, a cup and three quarters. Now here's a great tip. I call for cake and pastry flour in this recipe. And what do you do if you don't have it on hand? To turn all-purpose flour into cake and pastry flour, measure one cup then take out two tablespoons of that flour, replace that with two tablespoons of cornstarch, and you've got cake and pastry flour. Now I just add a quarter teaspoon of fine salt. Give it a little sift. And see right there why you always have to sift your flour, those last few lumps. I like to sift using parchment paper. It's very tidy, and it's just so easy to lift and pour into your mixing bowl. I add it all at once, and then just simply mix it until it's blended. Now that the doughs come together, you can actually get a sense of that sandiness, why it earns the name sable dough. So if I were to try and roll it right now out on the work surface, oh, it would just stick everywhere. So we have to give it time for the butter to chill again. But I want to roll this out flat, so I've got it shaped in a disc. And it usually takes about two hours to set. And I've already got some chilled. There, that will be easier to roll now that the butter's had time to set. If I used cake and pastry flour to roll cookies, it would absorb into the dough too quickly and possibly dry it out. Using all purpose means it's gonna stay on the outside of the dough. And I keep moving the dough and turning it to make sure it's not sticking. It doesn't take a lot of pressure. Like everything in the baking world, practice makes perfect. I've rolled the dough to about an eighth of an inch thick. Beautiful. And the sable dough is ideal because that beautiful fluted edge doesn't even shift a bit once it bakes. So any style of cookie cutter you use will bake up the exact same size. That's why it's perfect for a sandwich cookie. Now, I've preheated my oven to 325, and these take about 10 to 12 minutes. I can tell when the sable cookies are perfectly done because there's just a hint of golden brown around that scalloped edge. Now, I bake these ahead of time and let them cool so I could fill them right away for you. So now we're gonna turn simple sable cookies into empire cookies. A classic Empire cookie is filled with raspberry jam. The top is then covered with a simple icing sugar glaze. And just let it flow to the very ends. And it's all finished off with a glacé cherry. And this is your textbook Empire cookie made with that simple, basic sable dough. Mmm. <laughs>